talk about stress urinary incontinence a problem which is as common as that every third women is suffering from this so uh, quickly i'll tell you these are the points i am going to highlight history and some important historical milestones how to interact with the patient examining the patient detail eval evaluation treatment options surgical details and maybe the future whatever the time permits so this is maybe the most important thing in sui what i want to tell you is this is ics international continent society's definition that a complaint of involuntary loss of urine on effort of physical exertion or sneezing or coughing is stress urinary incontinence now the history of sui is long if you have read tlens you will say that 200 years people have been trying to find out solution now but still we have to see so the things changed from 1990s when peter petros and olmstein both from germany Uh, gave this idea of integral theory of uh, prolapse pelvic organ prolapse and they said that they gave uh, it is a big theory i'm not going to explain it to you but just remember after the initiation of this theory started the era of mid urethral tapes before that whatever procedures we were doing we were doing either vaginally or abdominally at the bladder neck after that we shifted little down and we started doing the procedures at at bladder mid urethra so that is tension free vaginal tapes or these are also known as mid urethral tapes so it changed the management of sui totally upside down because that time gold standard used to be birch kolpa suspension which we do abdominally now even if the recommendation now says that even if you are doing a hysterectomy for fibroid from above you come down and do the management of stress urinary incontinence from below so our time we are living in the era of trust tension free vaginal tapes so very important before we start taping the patient very important is how do we interact with the patient and that's something i want all resident and all juniors to understand so when a patient comes to you with a diagnosis of sui because as soon as the patient says that i am having stress urinary incontinence she is diagnosed to have stress urinary incontinence now important thing is what is the duration now duration can be of two types patient can say that i am having stress urinary incontinence just for two weeks or a week and the other patient can say that i am suffering with stress urinary incontinence with from 10 years or 5 years what is the difference when it is a transient stress urinary incontinence though for every patient like for every secondary amenorrhea we have to do upt we have to rule out pregnancy exactly for every case of sui we have to rule out urinary infection but still in your mind you get an idea that anybody cannot be having infection continuously for 10 years so if the patient is saying that her problem is for 5 years or 10 years most likely it is not because of cystitis but if the patient says for only 10 days i am having then very likely the cause is cystitis so it is very important to know what is the duration of that stress urinary incontinence second thing is severity so till now whatever literature we get or whatever practices are going on all are focusing on quality of life because they said that this is the measure okay but i think it is very important to know the severity because patient okay patient says that it is not affecting her but i think it is our duty to tell her what are the implications of stress urinary incontinence and longer life so till now there is no tool or no grading system which tells to quantify or to stratify the disease based on anything then we have to find out mixed urinary incontinence so some patient will have pure urge some patient will have stress urinary incontinence but what literature says and i myself have seen in the practice that most of the women will have many women will have both the things together they will have little component of sui little component of urge that's not called separated like sir was saying if you have to say urge you have to rule out sui but if the patient has both the things it is called mixed urinary incontinence in an, in that mixed urinary incontinence you have to find out what component is bothering the patient more because you cannot treat both the things together because one is causing relaxation and causing more 
and the other is tightening the urethra. So if you are doing it can cause disasters. So you have to actually do stepwise approach and you have to find out what component is more troublesome for the patient whether it is stress or it is urgency. Then comorbidity is very important because if she is a diabetic, maybe because of diabetic she is having recurrent urinary tract infection and she is getting stress urinary incontinence again and again and more or less continuous. Then very important thing is BMI. BMI many people think that it is important because obesity causes stress incontinence. Yes, maybe little bit is important. But obesity is important more because I don't know whether you have heard of this or not. What happens when you tape the patient? You put some TVTO or TVT tapes and then patient thinks, okay, now my lifestyle is good. I can go jogging and exercising and she loses weight. 10 kg she loses weight and the tape becomes loose. She lost weight and again she is having stress urinary incontinence. So the thing which you have to remember that you have to tell the patient if you are planning to lose weight, rather do it before the surgery, not after the surgery because the surgery is going to fail if that fat is lost from the pubic area. Okay. So mode of delivery is now many years, for many, many years we thought that mode of delivery is important. I was telling when we were discussing the first case that because pelvic floor gets torn here and there and gets stretched, that's why stress as well as urgency we get because of normal delivery. And as sir was also saying that it is not recommended to do cesarean, actually that's right. So I got a patient who had previous two, many patients actually I'm getting who are having cesareans before and then also they are complaining of stress urinary incontinence. So, urodynamics is not, as sir said that urodynamics is not required for every case. But yes, it is required for few cases. And next time, if you remember, we'll ask uh, uh, Dr. Fenfgill, he tells some, some relation that if the patient had some two, veg, two cesarean births, it is equal to, and she has gone through two pregnancies, it is equal to, I think, some one, one normal vagina, stress of one normal vaginal delivery, some formula he tells. So it's not. What I want to tell you mota mota is that these women, you cannot say that this women cannot have stress urinary incontinence just because she has delivered by cesarean. One thing, one probability is that maybe patient has gone through the full labor and stretched to pelvic floor and then ultimately taken up for cesarean. But the other thing, even the stress of pregnancy on pelvic floor is immense, it is not less. Just becoming pregnant also can predispose to all these problems. But what is most important out of these, whenever you talk to any patient who is having any urogynecological problem, the prerequisites are your time, your patience and your empathy because patient is very ashamed of telling her problems. So examining the patient, I'll ask you one question for examination. How many of you know bony Marshall's test and Q-tip test? Because now the differentiation be between internal sphincter deficiency and hypermobility has gone. Every patient will have components of both in different combination and the treatment for both is same. It is mid-urethral tape in this era. So if you don't know these tests, forget it. No need to learn it now. But what you should learn is this. So the first thing is cough stress test. So there can be two extremes. If you feel a lot of blood, if I drink, drink, drink water and you tell me to cough, maybe I will also leak. Okay. And the other extreme, if the bladder is empty, patient has actually problem where she is going to leak when the bladder is empty. So in 2018, as late as 2018, people realized the need of a proper making a protocol how this cough stress test should be done which I am going to tell you a little later before that is called universal cough stress test and all of you should do cough stress test like that. The second thing is examination of prolapse very important that you have to see cystocele. Now what happened when patient came to us uh, two years ago and she gave a history that some urologist had taped her two years ago. Okay, and that time also patient told that bulge was little, but after taping the urethra, patient had to strain little more. So the bulge in one year time only, bulge became too big. If a gynecologist would have seen her that time, maybe they would have done a cystocele repair as well as 
tape the urethra also. So it is very important if the patient is having cystocele, you have to do it simultaneously with different incision, but you have to tape the urethra and do the cystocele repair in one setting. BMI, I have already told you the funda behind BMI, why you should know about it. Then abdominal mass, especially full bladder. You must check full bladder because if the patient is having overflow incontinence, her bladder will be full and then you tell her to cough, she leaks. Maybe she's, her sphincter, everything is okay, but the bladder is so full because of overflow incontinence. That if you are not able to check in examination, as I said, you can see post void residual urine also in the ultrasound, but that is very important to rule out before you plan a surgical management. That whenever the patient you are examining, just stroke her labia, minora, majora with your glove finger and little bit clitoris also and see if the sphincter contracts or not. Now I am doing it routinely for every patient to see the integrity of nerves. That patient became alright by the way, slowly. So this is about uh, the universal uh, cough stress test I was talking about. So in that, as you know, the patient has to be in supine or lithotomy knot, the dorsal position. And you have to fill the bladder 200 to 400 ml. Now how do you know that 200 to 400 ml? Can anybody tell me? How can you tell that patient's bladder? We are not filling from outside, we are telling her to drink water. Very good, lovely. So I thought you will say that like patient, you will say I have, I drank, drank 400 ml of my bladder. It is not like a tank, okay? It has to go through kidney and all. So with the first sensation, so first sensation of urgency when patient has and it, it can be managed. Patient need not go to a washroom after that. So 200 to 400 ml is when she gets the first urge. When she says first urge, you start examining her and forceful cough. How many times? not more than four so and then you have to directly visualize the urethral matus standing on one side of the patient don't stand in front of the patient stand on the other side of one side of the patient and examine the presence of leakage a positive test is when after all this patient leaks that is the positive test now investigation evaluation so what you should not do Uroflometry, no, because urethra in women is very small. Pat test, again, no. Cystoscopy, not required, especially in cases of SUI. And urodynamic study, very rarely. One example I gave you, when patient, when the things are not correlating, patient had delivered all children with previous cesarean, and now uh, you, you, a patient is giving history of SUI, you must do. So there are only a few indications where you should do urodynamic studies, but that is important. So we need a urodynamic machine for that. Okay, what you should do is urine microscopy. 100% you have to rule out infection. You have to tell the patient to maintain bladder diary as was being discussed. How much patient is taking, how much patient is voiding. When she gets that episode, all these things are very important to know. Quality of life questionnaire you have to tell to know, to make patient aware actually. Okay, treatment. Uh, all guidelines say that first line of treatment is pelvic floor uh, muscle training but gold standard there is a difference between first line treatment and gold standard gold standard is mid urethral tapes or tension free vaginal tapes so uh, first line treatment is pfmt nice guidelines have told that how to do it though not very easy to do it but this is how you have to do nice guidelines have has this thing now, uh, this PFMT, this was a Cochrane study done in Cochrane Review in 2014. What it said is very important and very relevant. They compared 18 studies and they found that the cure rate was 56% after pelvic floor exercises. Um, like it was, it had a very good cure rate, but the problem is it does not last long, long term effect. Patient has to keep, it's not that three months you do exercises, you are free for life. Maybe that time, so you have to continuously do that and compliance as you age, as you become more complacent to life. I know it is difficult to keep on doing every day so many exercises. Okay, then this is another study which says that PFMT should be first line, but again, they are not very clear about the long term results. Again, this is another study still confused. Should we do or should not? We should do, but it's okay. Okay, this is the TVT uh, and so 1996 introduction of TVT happened in Germany, 
by retropubic approach and 2001 to make it little less complicated we decided on TVTO so I'm not going to go to details of this surgery and then but the thing is uh, the treatment did not stop after two, 2001 so you start doing minimally invasive you want to make a more and more minimally invasive we did laparoscopy now we want to do single port then we want to portless from vagina we want to do anything so that human nature we want to do minimal 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 so in that bargain now there are tapes available which just fix to the obturator membrane so single incision the things that do not come even to the groin folds and um, but the problem started all in uh, 2008 when FDA started warning about the meshes but one thing you can read about it one thing I want to tell you that this all warning all controversies are about the meshes and mesh also again depends on who is doing what mesh you are using and where you are placing the mesh but about stress urinary incontinence so in stress urinary incontinence or sacrospinous hysteropexy also what we saw we are just using a tape it is not a mesh so there are two concepts one we are developing a fascia the other we are developing the ligament so ligament are always fibrosed so all these Committee statement, position statement made by IUGA or Europe, Australian Canadian societies. Everybody is saying that nobody is against the tapes. Problem they say is because of the meshes. Because tapes are forming new ligaments and new ligaments have to be fibrous, have to be strong. Mesh causes fibrosis when you put it in entire plane and there are chances of erosion in that. So they are still in. They are not gone into disrepute and are giving good results to summarize what I want you to remember is SUI is a complaint it is a symptom and uh, must be demonstrated yes this is one important thing whether I told you so if a patient says that I'm having SUI you can start conservative management you can send her to pelvic floor muscle training you can teach but before surgery you have to demonstrate with which test which test what what cough universal cough stress test yes so examination i have told you what to do what not to do evaluation i have told you what to do what not to do and this is we are still living in the era of medurethral slings and techniques we have to master so that we can minimize complications and i'll just end it with this that SUI is very common more common than chronic condition and it severely affects quality of life uh, palliation, the cost of palliation, quality of life affection is costlier than even cancer care, care. So we have to make the patient aware. We have to diagnose it early and we have to treat it. Thank you so much.